Hello, I'm Mark Hamstra with Supermarket News, and with me today is Brad Christian, Head of Strategic Growth, U.S. Channel Performance at Ipsos. Welcome, Brad. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me today. Really appreciate it. All right. Uh, And today we're going to be discussing uh, Ipsos 2023 e-commerce experience report for the grocery industry. So let's get right into it. Um, What do you see as the main takeaways for food retailers from this year's report? Well, we've been conducting this type of research for the last five years. It uh, germinated out of the uh, the pandemic and the interest in understanding how all retailers were fulfilling e-commerce uh, capabilities was, was really interesting. But you know, we've now sort of landed on a very specific way of thinking about this. And so it's a grocery supermarket focused you know, e-commerce excellence, e-commerce experience study that we conduct. And, you know, the, 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 cake, the takeaways... I would categorize as the three C's. Really, e-commerce is really about convenience, communication, and completeness. You know, convenience is if this isn't a convenient and flexible uh, way of conducting business with your brand, then I'm less inclined to want to use it. So uh, that's really important. Uh, I think the other C is communication. Uh, You can have too little. And you can have too much. And there is a sweet spot around how you communicate with the consumer in this experience. Uh, You need to let them know that you received their order. You need to let them know when you think they'll be ready to deliver the order or pick or have that order picked up. And then you obviously want to tell them that the order has been delivered. Uh, Those are kind of the key components of communication. And then the last piece, the last C, if you will, is completeness. Uh, And that is just order accuracy is so important. We've seen that in all the work that we've done is that uh, give me what I want when I want it, but I really want to make sure I have everything I asked for. All right. That's uh, very interesting uh, about uh, the uh, communication aspect. I think that's something that uh, uh, retailers will be, uh, would be interested in, uh, in learning more about, but uh, uh, I also noticed that uh, Walmart, uh, Walmart and Albertsons were identified as uh, brands to watch based on their e-commerce performance uh, improvement uh, in this report. And uh, I know Walmart and Target both performed well. Can you talk a little bit more about what those companies are doing well? You know, um, it's a great question. So in early 2023, we saw that brands like Walmart and Target were making substantial investments in their e-commerce offer. And, you know, Walmart specifically uh, was focused heavily on e-commerce store automation. And we even uh, saw in the press about Sam's Club having bots that were scouring the aisles and and looking for out of stocks, you know, getting back to that point I made about completeness and order accuracy. Uh, So we've seen companies really invest heavily um, and if I could use an example for Target, they um, both brands, Target and Walmart, for that matter, have have leveraged their one of their strategic assets in this business, and that is their store footprint. Uh, and Target specifically, um, at any given time, Target may fulfill 96.8 percent of their uh, online orders through their actual stores, not necessarily distribution centers. And, and what Target has been doing is, is following a strategy. They, they developed uh, their stores as a hub initiative. And that is where they'll actually take um, orders, fulfill an order through multiple stores, put it all in one individual store, and then deliver from that store so that their, their routes are as dense as possible so they can try to make that as the most efficient methodology possible. And so, you know, we saw that. And then, you know, I can't speak specifically to Albertsons and the investments that they've made, but they shown, shined in our report this last go round, uh, delivery and curbside pickup. The confirmation of order was something that they performed very well on. And then just specifically around curbside pickup, their, comf- uh, their clear signage and, and letting the consumer know where to be to get those orders was a, was a bright spot for them. Mm-hmm. That's almost an extension of uh, what you were talking about earlier about communication, uh, sort of making sure that uh, the right your uh, the retailer is sending the right message to the consumer at the right time, right? But but uh, and what other uh, retailers appear to be doing uh, certain things particularly well when it comes to e-commerce? Well, as we said, Walmart, Target, and Albertsons both excel both in delivery and pickup. But in terms of curbside pickup, we also saw strong performance by HEB, Amazon Fresh, and Whole Foods. 
Interesting. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, retailers are are really catching up on that curbside pickup service, it seems. But uh, what uh, what trends have you observed in uh, consumer expectations around grocery e-commerce since you started doing this survey back in uh, 2020? Well, I think what we've seen is that consumers are less tolerant of mediocrity. You know, during the pandemic and for several years thereafter, I think we were all just thrilled to be able to have access to basic goods. If you were late with the order, okay. If there were, you know, some out of stocks, okay. Um, I could live with that. You know, consumers, you know, tolerated those kind of things. But as we've gone on now and gotten, you know, what I'll call back to normal, if you will, um, consumers are less tolerant of those things. And really it's about make it convenient for me, keep me informed, but don't bother me so much that I needed to have done this myself. And if you're going to substitute on me, just let me know. Mm -hmm. So in fact, one of the things that we saw in a, one of the things we studied is this idea of, is this e-commerce experience with us better than physically coming in the store? Is it more or less problematic? Because obviously when you think about convenience, it needs to be convenient to win on that dimension. Uh, and so we actually asked consumers about that. And, you know, our star performers like Target and Walmart and Albertsons, very few consumers suggest that there were any challenges or problems and that it was easily and most obviously a better, uh, more convenient experience than physically coming into the store. But we did have other retailers where one in five or one in four of their, their consumers suggested, you know, I'd, I'd just rather come to the store after it was all said and done. And, and you know, that's clearly an opportunity for those brands. All right. Uh, speaking of opportunities, wh where else do you see opportunities for uh, food retailers to improve their e-commerce performance? You know, there were two opportunities that, that sort of stood out in our research. And the first one is about out of stocks and the substitution process. So you take a brand like Publix, you know, they rely on Shipt or Instacart as their third party uh, fulfillment partner. And uh, both of those companies do it slightly differently, but they give the consumer sort of a real time substitution dialogue, if you will, um, and give the consumer an opportunity to, to make sure that if they're going to be there's something out of stock, they can they can replace it with something else in kind of in real time. Uh, and, and I think that's important from a value proposition for a Publix or other brands like them that do that. And, you know, if you have one out of stock, one item that I can influence what you substitute on me, that's a good experience. But if you have lots of out of stocks where I'm just getting kind of bothered and harassed, I, I, I outsourced this to you for a reason. I didn't want to be on the shopping trip with you. Um, then that's less delightful and, and in fact starts to speak badly of that interaction when in fact it's not shipped or Instacart's you know, fault. It's the retailer being out of a, a, a meaningful number of items that the consumer is looking for. And, and so that's um, having what people want uh, when they want it is really important. And, um, and there were a few retailers that did not perform well on that front. So I, I would say that was one of the opportunities. And I think the other thing that came up as a challenge is packaging. And um, what our consumers told us is that uh, retailers were over packaging their orders, providing too many bags for too few items or stapling or uh, taping bags shut. So it just became really tedious to to unpack their orders and, and to put them away in their refrigerator or their or their pantry. And I think that combined with oversized boxes or multiple boxes uh, gave customers pause about you know sustainability and is this a wasteful process? Uh, so I think that getting that right is kind of the second key opportunity that brands can work on. Well, terrific. Uh, and certainly uh, uh, a lot of room for improvement still out there uh, in uh, food retailing e-commerce. But uh, well, it was great uh, speaking with you today, Brad. I appreciate you taking the time. No, oh, my pleasure, Mark. Thanks so much.